word as you wrote it, as you intended it, as you know. Lord God, we falter sometimes. Lord God, we are in need of your strength. Hold us up during this time. Help us understand that you help simply by the name that we call you. In your son's name we pray. Amen. So our sermon is going to be from John chapter 8, verse 58. You can find it on the uh, back part of your, um, your bulletin. Uh, and this is one of those uh, Holy Trinity Sunday. I love this. I, I, I kind of wait uh, for this uh, passage uh, because it is um, one of those challenging ones that the world tries to say, hey, um, what are you doing um, worshiping a God who's not there and who doesn't reveal himself? Uh, and if you can remember, I can't believe uh, it's been an, over 10 years ago that this book came out. Did, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not, this, I, I got it at Goodwill. Got it at good. I used to have it, lent it out to somebody, uh, hadn't seen it come back to me. Uh, this is one of those books that I literally could read a paragraph at a time. Uh, and literally I had to put it down and go for a walk and then come back and, and, and read it some more and go for another walk because uh, Dan Brown takes uh, the uh, one word and, and then changes it into something that's not. And I literally had to just you got it all wrong. And he comes up with some really, really bad things in his mind that, of course, he stole from another book. Uh, and he wrapped it in a murder mystery. Uh, but he has this um, part in the book and part in the, the movie that I just, I just, I'm glad that a remote isn't a brick or else my TV might have a hole in it. I mean, it's that kind of a movie. I do not suggest, I don't recommend reading this book. I don't re recommend seeing the movie. But in, in the book, as in the movie, uh, these characters are having a, a conversation with each other, and they're talking about who Jesus is, and they're talking about, ironically, the Nicene Creed. Uh, and he gets the Nicene Creed way, I mean, nothing he says about the Nicene Creed is, is really correct. Uh, he says, at this gathering, many aspects of Christianity were debated and voted upon the date of Easter, the role of the bishops, the administration of the sacraments, and of course, the divinity of Jesus. And the, the female says, I don't follow his divinity. My dear, until that moment in history, Jesus was viewed by his followers as a mortal prophet, a great and powerful man, but a man nonetheless, a mortal and she says, not the son of God? That makes me... Okay, so he has phrased it, and, and Tom Hanks was asked, because he's supposedly a believer, he says, uh, Tom Hanks says, aren't you worried that people will, will lose their faith because you have made a movie like this? And he's like, no, I'm, I'm really hoping that it'll stir conversations in faith. The problem is, it's done the opposite of what Tom Hanks uh, has has thought it was going to do. Instead of leading people to the truth, uh, people watch a, a movie like this. Oh, that must be true. That, that They must have a cover-up, kind of like the JFK cover-up, because we're all about conspiracies nowadays. And so who is Jesus really? We need to get bound to the basics. Uh, so I hope you buckle in, because we're about to go through a, a couple thousand years of, of, of history here uh, of who Jesus is. Uh, and I hope and I pray that I can get this right. We've got to go back uh, in time uh, to this time. Charlton Heston, another movie, of, of course. And uh, Charlton Heston before um, uh, The Burning Bush. And we have got to study this like crazy because this ties in uh, with what we want to know. Uh, God spoke uh, to Moses in here. Uh, he spoke as, as uh, what's called the angel of the Lord. Uh, and um, uh, if you can read, this is really easy, right? This is the Hebrew. All right, this is the Hebrew. As you know, Moses, a mere man, uh, is, is trying to weasel his way out of uh, going to Egypt and freeing God's people. And one of the things he says is, God, I don't even know your name. When I go to your people and say, hey, your God told me to, to get you out of here, what do, what do I call you? 
Uh, and here is the Hebrew. Uh, it reads this way. Okay, it reads this way, uh, and it says, uh, and God said to Moses, uh, I am that I am, uh, and thus says, uh, thus saith uh, to them, all right, uh, I am, say to Israel, I am has shellacked, sent me to you. Uh, and we want to really key in on this word right here. I'm going to teach you some, some words here. All right, y'all have to, I'm going to ask you, there's going to be a quiz at the very end. All right, so I'm going to teach you this Hebrew word, and this Hebrew word is, is, is very important. Uh, what's called an aleph uh, on this side is the start of that word. It'll tell you what the verb, if it's in the past tense, future tense. Okay, that's very important, but uh, the main thing here is this little idea here, These the, the letters that kind of double. All right, if you just take the, the, the letters and put them in a word. Uh, this would sound like haya, kind of like when you're about to break a board, right, in karate, and you say haya, haya. You know Hebrew now. You know Hebrew. Haya is, is the verb for um, to be, to be. Uh, and when we translate this, uh, when Moses says, who, who sends me to the people of Israel? God says, I am. I am. Say to Israel, I am has sent you to them. The I am. The I am is his proper name. The problem was, how do we translate that? Because the, the problem with this verb and the way it's written, uh, it has like a, a past tense, uh, a present tense, uh, and a future tense all wrapped up in this, this one little idea. How do you translate what God's name is when, when he's in the past, your present, and your future? And so uh, the people of Israel kind of struggled with this. And so uh, we go on and we look at our passage here. And Jesus said to them, let's read this together. Jesus said to them, truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. So they picked up stones to throw at him. But Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple. I've heard many times, I've had Jehovah Witness in my office tell me, Jesus never calls himself God. The problem is, he doesn't speak English in the Bible. The problem, I'm sorry to say, the Bible wasn't written in English. God speaks many languages. And so when the Bible was written, we look at, at this, this phrase, this phrase, all right, you got that? You got that? This is not Hebrew. This is Greek to you. Because it is Greek. All right? So, epen autos he esus. So, what he's trying to say here, we want to look at the bottom line here. Because that's what we really want to take a look at. And you're going to learn Greek here this morning. You know what you eat? Uh, you put in uh, a waffle in the toaster. What's that called? Ego. Ego. If you're a little kid, you love egos, right? Well, the name right there, ego, the first word there is ego. I, pronoun, I. I am. I am. And so Jesus uses this phrase, before Abraham was, I am. Ego a me. Ego a me. So when God says, ego a me, he's pointing to something else. All right? And so that's what we want to take a look at this morning. Uh, and uh, interesting enough, that's not the only time. Remember, look at this phrase. Train your eye to look for this. All right? So John chapter 6, verse 20. Got that? You guys haven't even taken Greek class. And you can already spot it, can't you? All right? Hade lege atus. Ego me. He's walking on the water, and they think they see a ghost. And they're afraid because ghosts aren't supposed to come to you on the water. 
Especially at midnight, when there's a bunch of fog and everything like that, and they're all afraid, and, and Jesus comes to them and, and says, I am. Stop being afraid. I am. He invokes his name. You want more? This is, this is the, 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 my fun one. All right. Everyone got that? From John chapter 18, verse 6, Jesus is in the garden. The soldiers have come to arrest him, all right? And they say, we're looking for Jesus of Nazareth. And then at the very end of there, he says what? Ego a me. He doesn't speak English, all right? Ego a me. I, I, I'm going to get you there at, before the day. I want you speaking Greek and Hebrew. He says, ego a me. I am. And interesting enough is that there's some personal reactions uh, that people have uh, when this kind of thing happens. Because uh, if, if you notice, if you notice that right after this in, in the book of John, the soldier's about to arrest him and beat him. But when he says, ego e me, they fall down to the ground. Why do you fall down to the ground just because someone says, I am? Why do you fall down in reverence? Because there's a reaction that people have. Uh, and so when we take a look at John chapter 8, also verse 59, when he says, before Abraham was, I am, What's in the I am? So let's read this together. So they picked up stones to throw at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple. If he was not saying anything, if he was saying, I am. But if there's something more to that, why would someone pick up stones to kill someone on the holiest site of your country unless they called himself God? unless he equated himself with the I am from Exodus 3.14. And interesting enough, I actually had to, to go to a, a, another book. From Matthew 26, 64 to 65, Jesus is before the Sanhedrin. Jesus said to him, you have said so. They asked, just Tell us if you are the Son of God. But I tell you, from now on, you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Look at the reaction to what Jesus says. Then the high priest tore his robes and said, He has uttered... He called himself God. You don't tear your robes and accuse someone of blasphemy unless they have done so. So when the world says Jesus nowhere in Scripture calls himself God, I want you to say, yes, he has. Yes, he has. He's the great I am. He's the great I am. From Matthew 16, verse 15, Jesus is with his disciples. Jesus is with his, his followers uh, on his final trip to, to Jerusalem. And Jesus starts to get really, really deep theologically and looks around at everybody and says, who do people say that I am? What are people calling me? Some say Elijah. Some say John the Baptist. Some say, one of the prophets from the Old Testament. Matthew 16, verse 15, let's read this together. He said to them, but who do you say that, but who do you say that I am? This is the number one question that all of you and me have to answer. This is the greatest question that we will ever be posed. The world will tell you one thing, but when we search out Scripture, search out Scripture, and you'll see that Jesus says, I am the only. 
when he revealed himself to Moses, when he said he was the great I am, he was doing in the, in the manner in which I am Moses, I am sending you to my people. Why? Because they're having a party? No, because they're in 400 years of slavery and they needed someone to come and free them. And God says, I'm going to do it through you. There's a reason why God had not yet told anybody else his name, the I am. And so he marked that spot as, I'm going to be your savior, Israel. And so for us today, we have to answer that question, who is Jesus? Who do you call him? Is he just a a great prophet? Was he a guy that, hey, uh, you know, I can just kind of study? Who is the I am to you? Because he will ask you one day, and I hope, I hope that in this picture, you'll be just like that. Because you don't bow to someone you're friends with like that. You don't get on your knees unless that's God before you. So who is Jesus to you? There's a lot of things in his name, isn't there? The I am. The I am. Because when Jesus comes to you and reveals himself to you through the Holy Spirit, he wants you to call out as the Savior that saves you from slavery, from the bondage of sin that you're in, that I'm in. That's who Jesus is to me. Without Jesus, there is no life now and there is no life in the eternal. He is the one and only, and he has revealed himself for some reason to me. For some reason to me, I don't understand it. But God has declared his great love for me that even when I go through a bondage of slavery and sin, I don't go through it alone. So the question I have for you today is this. Who do you say that that person is? And in this lifetime, all of us have to to understand that who that is, the picture of Jesus on the cross, our answer, our answer has great implications for what's going to happen in the future. It also has great implications for my life now. That number one, this Savior that I cannot live up to has come to me to save me from my sins. Oh, that's just, that's, no, it it weighs heavy on me because I don't understand because God is not supposed to, to come to earth to be shamed like this and take my life on himself. Yet he has. So who is Jesus? I can tell you who Jesus is to me. I can tell you I am not worth it, and yet God values me more than anything else. I can declare that to you from his word, but unless you want to read it for yourself, unless you want to dive in and then see if Jesus lived for me and died for me, what am I living for right here, right now, and in the future? Because God has given you a certain time on this planet. And for some of us, I don't know if you're going to make it home today. I don't know if I'm going to make it home. I never know if this day is going to be my last. But I'm sure joyful when it is. Because I don't have to worry about what's going to happen if I can't take another breath. God's got it already sealed by the Holy Spirit. He's already given me this idea that I don't have to worry about eternity. He has paid it all. And I don't have to worry about measuring up and balancing the scales. Through Jesus Christ and faith in him, it's, it's already tipped. And I can live a life not worrying about what's going to happen next. I know there's stuff going to happen but I don't go through it alone. And I have the Savior of the world going through with me. So when Jesus says, I am, and declares that to you, who do you say that he is? The great I am. Lord God, Heavenly Father, Lord God, on this day, 
Lord God, there is a, a world and a culture that, Lord God, absolutely hates you. And that's so weird because you are a God of love. So weird that people um, like myself struggle with things every day. And Lord God, we lose sight of what the cross really means. Lord God, help us as we go throughout this journey in life. Uh, that Lord God, we, we pray that you stick with us, Lord. Protect us. Through your word, Lord God, may we not take for granted all the things you said to us. May we dive deeper and deeper in your scripture. May your word uh, be the anchor that we need in this life. May we see that you have given us answers, Lord. May we see the letter that you penned to us as words to live by. In your son's name we pray.